developers, but in the artistic field, for me, it's really, really unusual. So I think it was really a nice approach to open your, open your practice as a graphic designer. Um, so after the UI design, I wish here to talk about typography. And I would like to talk about Velveti Velveteen Type Foundry and OSP Foundry. Um, I like their work and I, I use their font families. Uh, I will give you a few examples uh, of VTF and the OSP. So there are two small foundries. You can download the fonts. You can use them. And um, there are some fonts on repo, uh, GitHub repositories. So you can download the fonts. You can create your own version and distribute your own versions. And in this case, I, I advise you to look at the readme file because there are different f um, licenses in open source. Uh, open source. Um, so um, in our work, we have to choose font families um, for websites and for, for apps. And um, what can we choose? So we can pay a font uh, in a foundry, and thus we, we pay the work of typographers. And they are really, really beautiful typefaces. And then you also have uh, free fonts. Some are properly drawn, and others are less properly drawn. And in this um, um, free fonts, you have the open source uh, fonts. Here, I'm giving you uh, two examples from uh, Velveteen Type Foundries. Um, First, you see the Fengardo, which is used for the Elysee website. This is the pres presidential uh, services website. And here you have the El Mans, which is used for a theater in the city of Lyon. Um, so um, why is it interesting to use open source fonts here? Uh, I would say that first, you have the quality of the drawn uh, typefaces. Uh, because of the mastery and because of the experience, they are really, for me, uh, remarkable typefaces. Um, and then, uh, for example, here, um, there are also typographers who are designers, artists, um, who have an experimental approach and who really push the limits and um, question their tools, their question their practice. Um, and for example, here, for open source uh, publishing, um, the typefaces have really particular, uh, uh, particular appearance and uh, it creates a really specific atmosphere for your website, for example. Um, and I think when we use open, f uh, open, open fonts, we also fight against uniformity because uh, mostly we use Roboto, we use open source song, we so use Sosom Pro. And I, here for me, it's really refreshing to, to see new typefaces and unexpected design. Um, I would like some other words about um, what it also brings to us to use open fonts. Um, in this case, for example, if you choose VTF or OSP fonts, it's, um, for me it's a really a strong artist choice uh, from you uh, because you also uh, support their open approach. And um, you can create your own versions and distribute it, so you become an actor and actress of the open source uh, um, field. And it's really great for me to, 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 to jump in this, in this field. Um, and also, as associations, as public organization, or as freelance designer, if you don't have any budget to buy a typeface, I think it's really a good alternative for you. Uh, look at this font and see if they have something that you can, that you can use. Um, so what else about these two foundries? Uh, VTF and OSP, which is a, a Brussels, uh, Brussels uh, organization, they, they apply to give a talk uh, estimate to print this year, but unfortunately, they, they won't give it. Um, so they also give workshops. So uh, here you have the font funk fork workshops, and you were invited to to create your own versions of, of the Cooper Ewitt. Uh, during two days, they accompany you to create your own versions, um, and on Sunday evening, everyone shows its results. Here you have a few examples. Um, so if you have um, if you have a typeface drawing basis, I do recommend you. To follow in, in Brussels uh, OSP workshops and VTF it's more in France and in Paris. Uh, otherwise, just go there, discuss with them, look at the results, and that's what I did two years ago. 
Uh, to finish with part, I would like to t say a few words about originality and copy. Uh, so, these are the logos of copyright and, and copyleft. And um, maybe um, in the audience, designers might think, I won't share my design, I won't share my work because it's my original work and I would understand it, I do understand it. But you could open a selection of your projects because if you share your techniques, uh, the designers who will use it will create something completely different and developers are used to help each other. They, they give a, um, a technical help which is only a starting point and when you share your, your techniques you, you allow creativity and you allow everyone to progress so for me we really add skills, knowledge and intelligence and I think it's really for designers it can only be be enriching for us and when you really read that you have helped or inspired someone, I think it's really rewarding. So, um, we saw how designers share their work, now we will see how an organization can share the creative process and I wish to talk about Mozilla rebranding. Um, my goal here is not to give my opinion about the logos, uh, what I want to point here, here is how designers can commit in this open process. Uh, so, um, in this case, how do we share design process? How, what are the raised questions? And how to think further? Um, in June 2016, Mozilla launched an open consultation, and maybe you read things about it, uh, for the new logo and the new identity. Uh, during the, one of the biannual meeting, international meeting, and this was in London. So, I think uh, here you can see the, the process was open to everyone. It was more than 1,200 people. Uh, everyone can read the process and you also can give feedback. So for me, it was a first remarkable point. Uh, then we can follow the creative process and then process on their blog. And the third point is that they open uh, the, the seven uh, logo suggestion to the comments. So here you have the first seven uh, concepts. Um, I read lots of comments from all over the world, people saying, I like this one because it's what Mozilla represents for me, and I don't like this one because. What I wish to remind here is that the comments are based on the knowledge, uh, the, the experience, and the culture of everyone, and it's not so easy to judge a logo um, because in this case, first it will be used for years, and in this case, uh, it's for a big and important organization and brand. Um, and just to, to compare it something else, I will give you um, a comparison in the architecture field. Um, if you ask the audience to choose a building in the architecture contest, uh, on which criteria will the public be able to judge and to decide if this building or this building will be acceptable. Because in architecture, uh, you, studies, uh, you studied um, uh, resistance of the materials, drawing techniques, you have art history, art architecture history, and you design projects. And these points make that you are a little bit more capable than something else to judge a building. And for me, it's the same graphic design. And whatever field it is, you have to acquire technique and artistic basis to judge, to assess the field uh, and what you are looking, uh, looking at. So, to come back at, at these seven concepts, um, I would like to give some tips for non-designers to look at them. So, for example, when you have this, the question you can, you can, have, you can, you can have is, um, does it work in high scale for tarpaulin, for example? Does it, does it work in small scales? Does it work in colors and does it work in black and white? What are all the meanings each of them conveys? Um, which is the rhythm in each of them? Are there tensions between the, um, between the empty and the filled parts? Um, also, uh, how is it integrated in the graphic history? Does it add something new? Is it too common? Is it too ordinary? And does it respond to your client requests? Because here you have Mozilla, but you also have its users. 
users in all over the world and volunteers in all over the world. So for me, in this case, it's really, really difficult to create and to judge, um, and to judge um, these uh, suggestions. Um, so um, this use case uh, reinforced my feeling uh, that we do need uh, some, a toolbox to, to learn to look at them. We need designers to share our, our knowledge. And so the way I see how designers can commit in this, in this case is that share with your family, with your colleagues, with your friend, your, your knowledge. How do you look at these logos? Which are the qualities and the weaknesses of each of them? And uh, which one is acceptable and which one is not? And that's, that's what I wanted to, to point out here. So talking about a tool, uh, toolbox, um, I will here give you tips to share design practice with your team. Uh, UI designers usually uh, used to say, I don't understand. The outcome is different from my design. And when you ask for the reason why, the, re the answer is, oh, I'm sorry, the answer is, yes, but it works, good enough. I would say no. Design is not about good enough because designers don't put in a hit and miss way graphic elements. We don't throw in the air elements that would just drop on a page and create a random composition. Um, for me, design is to answer to a particular purpose by offering an aesthetic basis. Um, um, no, I'm sorry, um, aesthetic uh, by offering aesthetic quality and based on research and uh, reflection and that's why our design is strong and justified and so why do some developers feel free to to modify our design um, here uh, I would like to point out one reason and for me I think there might be a lack of understanding of what design is and what it brings um, so for me um, when designers give um, give a design it's based on uh, what they have learned, on their researches and uh, their practice. And I would like to go back to the etymology of the word design. So it comes from the Latin word the signum, the mark, the sign. And unfortunately, in French, uh, in the eight, 18th century, we lost the dessin, the, the purpose, the ID part. And we only kept the dessin, the, the drawing part. So unfortunately, we lost it in French. But in English, we we have the ID and the drawing, the purpose and the drawing, um, and uh, that's why um, when we give um, when we give a design, they are meant decision and based on theory, on aesthetic sense that we do develop during our stories and during our practice. Um, so for me, we have to complement each other to create the best project that we can. Um, and um, here I'm, I will give you uh, some tips to share your design, uh, design practice with your team because uh, we don't have time to talk about design principles and color principles, for example. So um, I would say that before showing any mock-up and design, you should introduce your graphic and artistic choices so you give context to your stakeholders to get on board. Then if in a discussion you are told um, Okay, I don't like it. Make it bigger, make it yellow, and put it here. Use the question why. Then you force your interlocutors to give their to present their arguments, and then you can explain to them that their concerns are not really justified. And the last point I would give here is pin your wireframes, your mockup, and your design to the wall, so everyone can access it. You will trigger discussion and thoughts. Um, the team will have uh, common steps and goals, and also you um, you avoid teammates to discover the design only when it's online because it's really hurtful for me. So it's nearly the end. I give you some links and references. So if you wish to to have a look at the Ricardo Vasquez videos, uh, you just search for the Hour of Design on YouTube. You have uh, Velveteen Type Foundry, OSP Foundry. Um, I don't have time, but if you wish to, to learn, to read something about originality and copy, uh, I advise you this book from Walter Benjamin. You have the blog spot from Mozilla. And if you wish, you have also the Gestalt theory, so you can have some information here. 
So uh, I hope it was helpful as an introduction to open design, even if you are maybe mostly designers here. I hope that um, you have some tips and some tools and food for thought to, to go further and maybe change the way we design, the way we collaborate, the way we work together, and the way we would communicate the, the design process. Thank you. Do you okay. You have 10 minutes. Yes. I have one. Uh, so it's, uh, thank you uh, for your talk. It was interesting. I have a question. How do you, it's more like a philosophical question. I don't know. Uh, so I'm not a graphic designer. Uh, and I wonder, uh, in open source, uh, you can change code and many people can con contribute to that. I also assume that usability design also can be a uh, uh, product of collaborative uh, ideas and uh, many people can adjust it. How do you think it can work when it comes to uh, logo design or any other artwork? Do you think there could be some collaboration? I will, I will, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, when we do collaborate in many fields, it can rest, and your question is about the usability and logo. If we work together on a project. No, but uh, uh, just uh, open, uh, when it comes to code and usability, I yes. think it's possible. Yes, but about logos. Logo yes, does it work well together? This is a personal point of view for me. When we create a logo, we can't be more than two. It's really personal. It's really difficult because um, for me, we can't. We can't. Uh, I believe that we can work together really um, properly w when we are two, because when I worked as a print graphic designer, to work together, you have to share common, um, common, um, how do you say it, knowledge, skill, and artistic ba basis. So first, if you work with someone that don't share this with you, it's really hard. And the case where I see that it works is when the people, it's really a kind of, how do you say in, in English, symbiose. We really can work together, we talk together, we understand each other just by drawing, for example. And for me, personally, I, I don't believe in logos created by, I don't know, 20 people. It's personal, but we can discuss more about it, maybe some other of you. Uh, can be open, but not open only, only logos, for me, the collaborative process, when you are really there, are many, many, many people, it's I think really hard, yeah. really hard. You really have to understand each other and you have to make compromises. So when you have, for example, 10 people, I think it's really difficult. Thank you. We have time for one more. Yeah. So my question would be, uh, I really like uh, your, your idea that you say the, 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 the most important thing is to understand it's not about the aesthetics, it's about the purpose first and then like what you make out of it. And that a common problem is that people don't know about design that much, right? So they go into the discussion and they say, oh, that looks fancy. <laughs> yes. And my question is, do you think as designers, do we have to be more self-reflecting and more critical the way we talk about design to others? Because I feel sometimes we, we fall into this trap as well. Like we say, oh, I really like his work. And then we start, we don't say why we like it and, and, and say, ah, he explained, like this is the concept. So, so k kind of in order to make this better, we have to talk to people about it like we would talk with other designers. Like we have to show them, hey, yeah, this looks nice, but... Like, yeah, so um, the question is, uh, as designers, do we have also have a critical attitude and to question maybe our, our logos, our design, etc. And uh, yes, I, 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 I agree totally with you because if we only give our designs and we stop here without explaining why we made these choices, etc., in, in fact, we keep our knowledge for us. And that's why I talk about the toolbox and the tips. It's if we share um, our skills, our knowledge, and our choices, um, first, we make everyone understand it. And uh, for example, um, for me, if decision makers had a better visual uh, culture, we wouldn't suffer such low quality interfaces, for example. For example, and so also between um, between uh, different work fields, if we share our knowledge with developers, with I don't know marketing team, etc., and if we explain that, okay, maybe you find this great, but now let me explain you why I did this, and um, uh, uh, because of uh, design principles, composition principle, theory of colors, etc., and I think that as designers we really should 
open up practice and explain what we did and why did we did it because it's kind of we just share knowledge and we share culture and it's really, really important for me. It's really I believe in education, yeah. really. And if you keep it just for designers, we'll have um, a, a lack of understanding between the public, but also with other, other people in your team and with stakeholders. So I, I completely agree with you. We, we also have to have a critical attitude uh, with our work. So thank you very much, Milen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>